everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, today's topic is forecasting daily material demands from your model. And today's webinar is being led by Mazen Falawi. Mazen is a 4D and VDC specialist in our Berkeley office. Uh, he has a lot of experience with all different types of projects, airports, rails, large buildings, infrastructure. Uh, he has a master's in civil and environmental engineering and project management from the University of California, Berkeley. And he has a bachelor's degree in civil and environmental engineering from American University of Beirut. Uh, I'm Sue Den Genes, the Director of Marketing at Synchro Software, and just want to make you aware of a couple things. We have some training courses that are going on uh, in April uh, in London, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and in Berkeley, California. You can find details for each of those courses on the homepage of our website, lower right-hand corner. So, uh, thanks again for joining us. I'm going to turn it over to Mazen and let him get started. Thanks, Sue. Let's get started. So, um, as you can see, I have in front of me a small structural model, and it's a 4D model, so it's linked to the schedule. So, as I move the focus time slowly through the Gantt chart, we can see the actual uh, sequencing going on. Uh, and this is important to specify because this workflow doesn't work if it's an unlinked model. Now, if I click on any of these elements, this particular model came in from Revit, so these are the parameters that come in by default. But if you're using Navisworks or any other uh, source, you still get parameters that you can use. And if you look through these parameters, you can see that we can use the level, for example, for auto-matching, but we can also use the volume which is there for the columns, the slabs, as well as the footings. And we're going to use this parameter right here to try to forecast daily material quantities on site based on elements from our model. So the first step to do this is to create a task user field. And this is done by navigator user fields. You right click, click add. And this is going to be a number task user field. And let's call this concrete quantity. And let's give it a color, for example, green, so that when we graph it later on, uh, we'll identify it easily, easier. OK, now I've created this task user field, but it's still blank. Let me go ahead and load it in my Gantt chart so that when it populates, we can see the numbers. Uh, I'm going to load it directly after the finish date, so we can do this. And then click on OK. So here's the concrete quantity. Um, now I can go to the user fields. I'm going to go to the 3D user fields and look for the user field that I found earlier called volume. I'm going to right click on that and copy values to associated objects. Now I'm going to tell Synchro to copy the values from this user field to the destination user field, which is the task user field we just created called concrete quantity. And for operations with multiple associations, I'm going to choose some. This means that if many columns or many footings or many slabs are assigned to one task, Synchro will sum up the values from each of these columns and add them up to that task. And once I click Copy, I populate all these values. Now, just by doing that, I can plot this graph right here and go to User Field Graphs and see this User Field Graph that will show how the concrete quantities will be brought on site. But this is not the daily concrete quantities because if you look more closely, these are the quantities for the entire task and each task spans more than one day. So for the for the entire duration, we'll see this quantity on our Gantt chart. So we'll have to do a small adjustment. And I'm going to use this thing to demonstrate a second feature, which is how uh, compatible Synchro is with Excel, for example. So I'm going to create another user field and call this daily quantity. And again, it's going to be a task user field, and it's going to be a number. Now let's give it a color, for example, orange. And I'm going to show it in my Gantt chart, just like we did earlier. Right click, customize columns. I'm going to click on this one so it appears just below it. And load the daily quantity. And now it's preferable to go to list mode in that case, so that we don't see the parent activities, but you can still do that in WBS mode. When I go to list mode, I can hit Control A to select all of my tasks. And then right click, copy tasks as text, and then load up Excel, and paste there. And here I can see the quantity 
here I can see the durations and I'm going to populate this in Excel. So if you look at the durations, you can see the D for days. Let me take that out. So I'll just hit Control H and then find any instance of dn.colon and replace it with just a spacebar and replace all. So now I can go there and click equals this divided by that. So we're getting daily quantities. I'm going to do that. And then I can copy these and then populate them directly in Synchro by clicking here and right click, paste tasks as text. And now that they've been populated, I can show this graph against the other one. Now it's not very useful to show both against each other, so I can hide the other one. And I can see the daily concrete demand on my site. Now to take this a bit a step further, I can create a new task user field. And again, this is going to be a task user field. It's going to be a number. And call it actual quantity. And let's give it the color red. Let's load this on our Gantt chart by Customize Call. Uh, again, I could have done all these steps from the start, created three user fields, three colors, and loaded them all, but I want to show you the progress. And now we can plot actual quantities. You can do actual dailies or actual totals. And when it comes to uh, working on sites, for example, these models, these quantities are based on the elements from the model, from the BIM model, which is not always accurate. So when it comes to project controls, you can start typing in daily, uh, every day, the actual quantities, which could end up being uh, 950, and then 1,200, and then 5,000, for example, and then 1,200. And as you're moving through the project, you'll have a plot of actual quantities versus model-based quantities uh, that were brought on site. And you can use the green part to predict future uh, quantities and coordinate logistics based on that. And that's uh, everything that's to be covered in this webinar. It's pretty straightforward and easy. So if you guys have any questions, I can answer that. Okay, terrific. Thanks, Mazen. Um, I just want to point out while you guys are uh, thinking of questions. Um, so. If you've joined a few of our webinars, uh, they're typically hosted by our project delivery team. Um, these guys are based out of both Berkeley, California and uh, offices in England. And they are available to staff projects around the globe, short term or long term, if um, you, know, you don't have the internal resources to do this or you need to get up to speed really quickly. Um, so keep that in mind if you have a need for this type of work and uh, you just don't have the uh, resources. Um, they can get you a proposal and um, make sure you get what you need. All right, so um, I don't see any questions coming in at this time. This uh, um, webinar... I, I can mention something that I didn't mention before if there aren't any questions. That we use this fe uh, feature, copy user fields to copy user fields from the model elements to the Gantt chart, to the task, but you can also do the opposite. And if it's a string value, you have the option to not just uh, sum them, but you can also concatenate. So if you're copying element IDs from the model elements to Gantt charts, you can do that. Or if you're copying task properties, for, such as durations, uh, you can add them up into model elements so that later on when you're reviewing your model, you can click on an element and see how many man hours have been spent on this element and use this for future um, esti estimations and stuff like that. So you can do a lot more with this feature than what we just showed today. Okay, very good. Um, or oh, there is a question here. Um, can you show what it would look like when the Gantt chart goes back to the first layout? Oh uh, yeah, sure. So all I have to do is go to Windows and hide my user field graph. Oh, you mean work breakdown structure, I think. So I'll do that as well. So we went to the work breakdown structure mode. You can also use activity codes mode, which I don't have set up for this project. And this is how it would look like with the user field graph. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Have a great afternoon and a great weekend. Thanks, Mazen. Thank you.